All right, it's Belgium kit time. Everybody loves Belgium kit time. Uh, this is the Velleman kit, Velleman mini kit, uh, sound to light unit. Very cool, nine volt battery not included. Soldering iron required, I have that. Difficulty, two out of five. I'm pretty sure I can handle that one. Um, 0.5 milliamps minimum consumption, minimum. <laughs> and uh, one adjustable sensitivity, one times. All right, this is an MK103. Let's get it onto a tray. Nice. Uh, there is one, one staple, which we will remove. All right. So this instruction and stuff should be in the middle. Yep. All right. Start. Uh, it's got a microphone. It's got a battery holder. Look at that. Plays sounds because if you play the piano, things come out, and you hear a phone, things come out, and there's some music there. Uh, kind of old, old timey music. Kind of medieval looking. Not normal. Not normal. Um, Normal music notation. It looks very, looks very strange, and it's an alto clef, which is kind of weird. To I think that's alto clef. I know it looks really weird. <laughs> uh, here's the schematic. So the microphone goes into an amplifier. So a NPN amplifier. Here's a gain adjustment. It goes into a second amplifier, and then it goes into a drive circuit here. This is kind of a current multiplication. And uh, yeah, it goes out. So, and four LEDs. How nice. All in parallel though, so we will see. Let's get it built. What, what, comes, uh, what comes with it? Battery holder, some extra resistors, not in the bag, it's kind of strange. Uh, Single-sided board, Velleman. Uh, okay. LEDs. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's get it built. All right. What do I say? Put the flat things on first. Uh, I think I'll. Turn on my meter here so I can read homage so I don't have to read the color codes. Although these look these look okay. These aren't these are uh, these are pretty nice color codes, but I'm just lazy today, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna measure them. Why not? Alright, this one is a 46k ohms, otherwise known as a 47k ohm, which is R13. R13, okay. Put him there. And this one is a 46K ohm resistor, otherwise known as 47K. Uh, we'll put him on R14. Yeah, these are probably 5% tolerances, something like that. So just because they're 46 doesn't mean they're second rate or anything like that. Okay, this one is 328k ohms, otherwise known as 330k, which is R2. All right, let's solder some things down. Oh, we'll get ahead of ourselves.
Uh, I got a big, where's my cutter? So I got a big bump in uh, viewership due to the video that I did, How I Learned Electronics. And I don't know what happened. Maybe somebody can tell me. But in India, somehow it went viral. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what happened. I don't know if there's some like electronics YouTuber in, uh, in India, kind of like the you know, EEV blog guy, Dave down in Australia. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a Punjabi guy or something. I don't know. Um, that does things in India who recommended my channel. I don't, I don't know why it went viral in India, but it was huge. Um, everybody in India wants to learn electronics, I guess. Uh, so yeah, welcome to all my Indian viewers. I, uh, do a couple more resistors here. I did visit your country. Uh, I was there in 19, this one is a hundred K ohms. I was there in 1979, 1979. Uh, I went to Delhi and Agra and uh, then took a train to Nepal and then took the train all the way back to uh, Delhi again. So got to see the sights. We got lost, lost on a lost on a bus one day and we ended up in the middle of nowhere out way out in the suburbs. Uh, 1.5 mega ohms. Interesting. That would be R11. Um, and uh, we had to wait quite a while to find the bus back into town. A very huge uh, home home settlement there. And uh, people were very gracious, invited us into their homes and gave us chai. And yeah. But everybody that I have met who have either visited or lived in India will testify that the very best chai is on the train. And it has to be made out of the earthenware, which is not 1.5 mega ohm, another one. Um, it's not like kiln fire or anything. It's just like sun-dried er, mud. <laughs> That's a sun-dried mud. And as you drink the chai, it dissolves into the chai. <laughs> and uh, that's what makes it special. That's what makes it good. I think everybody, if you're from India, comment below. That's the best chai is the ones on the train that's half mud. That's really good. <laughs> I'm sure India is much, much different now. But I haven't had a chance to go back. Uh, 97K, I think that's something around 100K, R4. When we were in Delhi, we found some nice man at the train station who befriended us, wanted our money. Um, and he had a nice home with a guest cottage in the back. And uh, he rented out his guest cottage to us. So that was really fun. And he actually invited us into his home one, one evening where his wife cooked dinner. It was a nice home-cooked meal. 10k ohms. 
food in India is very good. R1, R is R1. And I remember saying something that confused them greatly. <laughs> we were having dinner and on my plate was a vegetable I was not familiar with. And I asked what it was. And they looked at me like I had just arrived from Mars not knowing this very, very, very common vegetable. And they told me, uh, that's a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> but from where I lived, carrots were orange. Carrots were always orange. Everybody knows carrots are orange. But if you live in India, carrots aren't orange. Carrots are red. A uh, hundred KMs. Um, <laughs> and so they were as confused as I was. Let's see here, R3, I didn't need a 100K, okay, R3. So let me know if carrots are still red or you now have orange carrots. I would like to know if orange carrots have finally made its way to India or they are still red. Um, I've never seen a red carrot in the United States ever. Um, there are other vegetables here that can be strange colors, a purple cauliflower or other things, but I, I don't think I've ever seen a red carrot in, in the States. Uh, another 1.5 mega ohm. Let's see here, R10? Did I have it? Yeah. R10. I don't know if you still can. When we were there, you could go inside of the Taj Mahal. I, th I don't know if they let people inside anymore, but when I was there, we, you could go inside. What a beautiful place. It's the most amazing man-made thing I'd ever seen. It would have been even more amazing across the river. So the, you never see this in photographs, but the Taj backs up to a river. And on the other side of the river, you could see a foundation of a very large structure that was gonna be constructed on the other, other side of the river. And uh, turns out it was going to be a second Taj, and it was going to be all in black. And that was for, I guess he was a king or a prince or something, king maybe? Um, so when his wife died, he erected the Taj Mahal, but he was going to erect himself his own on the other side of the river, all in black. So there'd be one white Taj and one black Taj. Wouldn't that have been amazing? All right, R647, yeah, these are, these are, all right, there's only one PNP transistor, so I'm going to put that one in first, so I don't have to think too hard on the other ones. T4, T3, T4 is up there. I don't think you've lived until you've been on a, a crowded Indian train. That was fun. <laughs> I remember we stopping at some uh, station and electricity was out, of course. It was dark. And uh, a baby goat came in the window. <laughs> 
somebody was taking their goat someplace. So a lot of times if you're a world traveler, you end up in countries where you don't really speak the language and it's hard to get a sense of the culture if you don't really speak the language. And, you know, you can go to Japan or China and unless you really speak the language, you're not really getting the full, the full story. But in India, thanks to the British, a lot of speak, people speak English, and so you can really learn quite a bit. Um, I was watching a YouTuber that travels around the world. What a great YouTube channel, guys who just spend all the time traveling. It's not all fun and games, but it does look interesting. And uh, one guy went to Le Le Lagos in, what is that, in Nigeria? I think it's Nigeria. Lagos is the capital of Nigeria, if, I, if I'm getting that right. And everybody speaks English. It's the, it's the, it is the language. <laughs> so, that's just amazing. A very, very different culture that speaks English. All right, all of the uh, resistors are in and all of the transistors are in. So how about some capacitors? These are all 104s, otherwise known as a 0.1, otherwise known as 100 nanofarads. Um, so. C3, C1. And how about C2? Yeah, that one too. Okay.
How about some LEDs? I've been very fortunate to travel a lot of the world. All right, we have a very big capacitor here, C4. Why do we have such a big capacitor? What's he doing? C4, uh, he's just buffering the microphone, so it keeps the noise down on the microphone. Sounds like a good thing to do. think all we have to do is put on our 9 volt battery and we will be done so there's a plus and I assume that's the minus there all right Let's see here. Is that the plus right? Make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, plus. I believe we are complete. Give you guys a good look at the uh, good look at the circuit here. Okay, well let's uh, give it a try here. It's got an adjustment, so let's put in a nine volt battery. Oh, I saw it flash. That's a good sign. I saw it flash. Oh, hello! It flashes when I talk. I am MSI guy. 
this is a completed project and a working project, unlike a lot of the projects I do. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Uh, so this has been um, Velleman kit number MK103 sound to light conversion. The sound goes in here and it gets converted with these things to light 